Harrison Ford was just a carpenter. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, uh, hear our prayers right now. Would you do something in this um, devotional time that is uh, meaningful, that draws us closer to you? It's through Christ I pray. Amen. Harrison Ford was a carpenter. He was a carpenter hired by George Lucas, the creator of Star Wars. Lucas needed a door built for the uh, casting offices. Fortunately or unfortunately for Harrison Ford, he wasn't a very good woodworker. Fortunately for Harrison Ford, somehow in the process of finding a Han Solo for the movie, Harrison Ford was discovered. He was there to be a woodworker, but he was discovered to be an actor. Legendary producer Fred Ruse said, Harrison had often done a lot of carpentry for me. He needed money. He had kids. He wasn't a movie star yet. The day he was doing it, George happened to be there, and it was serendipitous. It was a serendipitous start to one of the great movie careers of my lifetime. If it had not been for Harrison Ford being willing to be a carpenter, Star Wars would not be what it has become. There would be no Indiana Jones as we know him, and who knows what else we would be missing out on. Matthew chapter 23, verse 12 says, whoever exalts himself will be humbled. Whoever humbles himself will be exalted. When I saw that story about Harrison Ford starting out as a humble carpenter, I couldn't help but contrast that with how everybody today wants to be great. Everybody today wants to feel like they are great and popular and doing great and impressive things. I was reminded that when I read an article about a TikTok star named Charlie D something, and she's 19 years old and has 45 million viewers and has made $2.9 million doing something on TikTok at 19. There was a time when we thought the Kardashians was silliness. TikTok has brought this to a whole new level. See, the world worships flashy. Let's be honest. Even ministers like flashy and impressive. It's not unusual anymore to find ministers that have their own web pages with their books and their self-promotion and they're very concerned about their image and marketing themselves. And I'm not judging all of that. I'm just saying it kind of stands in contrast with a humble carpenter. With those who would say, whoever exalts himself will be humbled, but whoever humbles himself will be exalted by God. I'm so thankful that growing up, I saw the examples a lot of, of a lot of humble servants that I believe were great in God's eyes. See, the greatest workers, I think, are a lot like the example of Harrison Ford. They are just servants who are serving, just doing humble work that needs to be done when God lifts them up. In Mark chapter 6, it says of Jesus, he left there and came to his hometown and his disciples followed him. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue, which was his norm, just going to church. And many who heard him were astonished. Where did this man get these things, they said? What is this wisdom that he has been given, that has been given to him and how are these miracles performed in his hands? Isn't this the carpenter, the son of Mary. Moses was just a shepherd. Peter and James and John were smelly fishermen, 
Paul made tents. I think it's interesting in the book of Acts chapter 6, when you have the first leaders selected after the disciples, essentially they're just servants. Their selection is to make sure everybody gets enough food. Who impresses you? I think that's the question that I want for us to think about today. Are you impressed by the TikToker who is 19 years old and makes $2.9 million? Okay, I'm impressed that somebody can do that. That really is amazing talent in, in a way. But is that really what impresses? I'm impressed by my grandmother who taught a Sunday school class for 60 some years. And she had this book, a dress book, black, worn out. And she would write notes to her ladies. And she would call them and she would visit them if they were in the hospital. And she would pick them up and take them to church if they needed a ride. And she would make meals for them. I think that's what heaven exalts. I'm impressed by Mrs. Pressy. I was thinking about Mrs. Pressy recently. Not a very impressive woman in many, in the eyes of most. She certainly never had great education or wealth. But every week in my home church, she would get in the church van and she would drive all around, all around, Sagertown, wherever, I mean, and pick up people who wouldn't be able to get to church, except she picked them up in a humble church van. And she did it week after week, year after year, week after week, year after year. Nobody ever thanked her, as far as I know. Nobody praised her for it. She just did it because she was a humble carpenter. You know, I, it occurred to me recently, I never thanked her. I never told her I was impressed. I never told her I was watching, but I was. And I know God was too. Harold Hills, who essentially built an addition on our church practically by himself. He certainly spearheaded it. But when no one else worked, he was still working. He recruited people, worked hard. I learned a lot about how to work by working for Mr. Hills. This is Handcuff, who taught sixth grade boys and girls year after year after year. Handcuff was her name. Yes, her husband was a police officer, by the way. Melvin Smith, who was always the first to serve and still is. You need your roof put on? Ask Melvin, he'll help. You have a boy who needs a surrogate father? Melvin became the surrogate dad for more than one young man. I think my Greek professor, Frisney, he had a great dream. After World War II, he wanted to go to Japan to be a missionary. That's why he went to school, to be a missionary. He wanted to go be hands-on as a missionary and work on the field. But when he was going in school, he had a professor, Foster, that told him he'd be a really great preacher, or a really great teacher. You know, that there are some who need to stay behind and prepare those who go. It's not as... Um, Lucrative, it's not as impressive to be the one who stays behind and sends others out. But that's what my Greek professor, New Testament professor, did year after year for something like six decades. And I think that's the kind of person that God exalts. You know, we all remember the movie It's a Wonderful Life. Or... Bailey stays behind. He has a dream of greatness, but he doesn't. Not a glory seeker. Not arrogant self-promoter. Just the sacrificial guy who works behind the scenes where no one will see and few appreciate. Doesn't get rich, never gets famous. But he blesses untold numbers with his humble life. Uh, that takes faith. Today, I want to talk to you about the faith of a humble life that does not seek to exalt itself, but humbles itself to be a carpenter 
to serve, living in the hands of a God who is great. Whoever exalts himself will be humbled, but whoever humbles himself will be exalted. Today, let's live counter to the culture, not seeking the self-exaltation and glory, but just picking up a hammer and building a door, serving where we need to serve, and trust that a great God will take care of the rest. Heavenly Father, um, I thank you for the humble people in my life that you have um, shown me what greatness looks like. We live in such a confused world that is so much style and show and flash and so little substance. Help us today to be people of substance who just serve, who just build, who do the work of humility where maybe few people will appreciate except you trusting that you, that we don't have to exalt ourselves. We don't have to promote ourselves. We don't have to try to make ourselves great, but we serve a great God and you will make our humble efforts great in your sight. It's through Christ I pray these things. Amen. Thanks. I hope this is helpful to you. Have a great day.